A show of ancient power. Did you know? Dozens of Pokemon are based on prehistoric animals and other extinct species. Lots of Pokemon have some dinosaurian inspiration, though many are filtered through a lens of monster movies and TV shows that Game Freak watched as kids, especially Ultraman and Godzilla. Nidoking looks a bit like a dinosaur, but he was probably inspired by Baragon from Frankenstein Conquers the World. And of course, Tyranitar was modeled after Godzilla himself. But for the most part, we'll leave the monster movie references for another video. Today, we're just gonna focus on a few of the Pokemon based on specific animals animals that have gone extinct. So let's dig in and explore how paleontology shaped the world of Pokemon. The Dragapult family, and in particular its final evolution, draw inspiration from Diplocolis. These were amphibians with boomerang-shaped skulls that existed even before the dinosaurs. All three stages of the Dragapult family exhibit the theme of amphibian metamorphosis, the way real-life amphibian bodies transform as they grow older. Dreepy has visible gills and only two underdeveloped arms. Draycloak loses the gills and starts growing a second pair of legs. And Dragapult completes the metamorphosis with fully developed legs. These Pokemon also pay homage to Diplocolis via their elemental types, being half dragon and half ghost to reference the extinct amphibian. Yanmega is based on prehistoric giant dragonflies called Meganeura. With massive wingspans up to 28 inches wide, these ancient dragonflies were seven times bigger than the largest dragonfly living today. Yanmega being inspired by a Meganeura isn't only hinted at by them both having Mega in their names, but also by its method of evolution. Yanma evolves into Yanmega when it levels up knowing the attack Ancient Power. As mentioned earlier, Game Freak were hugely influenced by giant TV monsters who in Japanese were called Kaiju. Game Freak's long-held affection for Kaiju helped explain how Meganeura, out of the countless different prehistoric animals, came to have a Pokemon based on it. This is because there's an actual Kaiju who is a mutated Meganeura. It made its first appearance in Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, a film released in late 2000, just six years before Yanmega made its debut in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Aerodactyl, or Terra in Japan, is based on a pterodactyl or to use the scientific term, a pterosaur. Aerodactyl's about six feet tall, but pterosaurs could grow to 20 feet tall. They weren't all that big though, with some pterosaurs being tiny. In fact, in 2014, a new kind of pterosaur was discovered that was so small it could actually fit in your pocket. The paleontologist who discovered this pocket monster named it Aerodactylus, stating, the name derives from the Nintendo Pokemon Aerodactyl, a fantasy creature made up of a combination of different pterosaurian features. In addition to their confessed love for Ultraman and Godzilla, Game Freak were also influenced by the movie Jurassic Park, which debuted halfway into Red and Green's six-year development. In the games, scientists say Aerodactyl is extinct, but if you give them an old amber, they can bring Aerodactyl back to life. Examining the official 90s artwork for the old amber reveals that there's an ancient mosquito trapped inside, referencing how dinosaurs were resurrected in Jurassic Park. With the exception of Aerodactyl, all fossil Pokémon from the first three generations were inspired by creatures that existed long before dinosaurs evolved, around 230 million years ago. Omnite and Amistar are based on Ammonites, prehistoric relatives of the squid and octopus. Kabuto is essentially a mix of two ancient animals, trilobites and horseshoe crabs. Trilobites were among Earth's most successful prehistoric creatures, populating the world's oceans for nearly 300 million years. This real-world timeline is reflected in the Pokédex, which tells us that Kabuto hid on the seafloor 300 million years ago. Horseshoe crabs, on the other hand, are prehistoric arthropods that have survived into the modern era and can still be seen washed up on beaches. Since they're twice as old as dinosaurs and have barely changed at all in 450,000 millennia, horseshoe crabs are sometimes referred to as living fossils, a term also used by the Pokédex to describe Kabuto. Kabuto's evolution, Kabutops, is a mix of two prehistoric animals as well, trilobites and sea scorpions, ocean-dwelling arthropods that could grow up to 8 feet long, twice as big as Kabutops. The Lilip family are based on sea lilies and are even classified in the Pokédex as the sea lily Pokémon. Real-life sea lilies live deep in the ocean, attached to the seabed by a stalk. Even though they're animals, they look more like plants, which is why Lilip and Cradilly are half grass types. Anorith is classified as the Old Shrimp Pokémon, which is fitting as its evolutionary line is based on Anomalocaris, an extinct relative of arthropods whose name means Odd Shrimp. At three feet long, Anomalocaris were the apex predators of their day. When all life was confined to the oceans half a billion years ago, shrimp were at the top of the food chain. Starting in Generation 4, Game Freak began basing fossil Pokémon on dinosaurs rather than the prehistoric creatures that came before. 
Cranidos and Rampardos draw inspiration from Pachycephalosaurus, dinosaurs whose skulls were 10 inches thick, making them the thickest skulled animals ever to have walked the Earth. The Pokedex says Cranidos toughen their already rock-hard skulls by headbutting one another, a habit inspired by the speculated behavior of Pachycephalosaurus. The Shieldon family are based on Ceratopsians, the most formidable plant eaters of the Cretaceous period. They could grow up to 30 feet long and were more than capable of defending and sometimes even killing a Tyrannosaurus. Shieldon and Bastodon are herbivores as well, with the Pokedex telling us they eat grass and berries. Some viewers might think that all Pokemon are plant eaters, but the Pokedex makes it clear that some actually eat meat. Some even eat other Pokemon. The Pokedex says Furret hunt Rattata, Talonflame's favorite food is Wingle and Pikapak, and Sneasels scare Pidgey away from their nests so they can feast on their eggs. Tortuga and Caracosta, the proto-turtle Pokemon, are based on extinct protostegid turtles. Protostegids were among the biggest turtles that ever existed, measuring up to 15 feet long and weighing 5,000 pounds. The largest protostegid, Archelon, was the size of a car and lived in the shallow oceans that once covered North North America, which is probably why the Tortuga family was introduced in the American-based region of Unova. The Arkin family was based on Archaeopteryx, the earliest known bird, explaining why the Pokedex classifies Arkin and Archaeops as the first bird Pokemon, and says they're the ancestors of all bird Pokemon. Archaeopteryx were an ancient evolutionary stage between feathered dinosaurs who couldn't fly and their descendants, including modern-day birds. Archaeopteryx could grow up to 20 inches, which is the exact height of an Arkin. Tyrunt and Tyrantrum are based on the world's most famous dinosaur, the Tyrannosaurus. You may have seen some Jurassic Park debunked videos claiming that Tyrannosaurus were actually scavengers rather than apex predators depicted in the movies, but most paleontologists believe they were actually both. They scavenged when the opportunity arose, but they were primarily active predators. Tyrannosaurus had one of the most powerful bites of any land animal, allowing them to crush the bones and meat of any creature that stood in their way. The Amara family are based on the long-necked dinosaur Amargosaurus, whose neck sails may have been used for peacocking to attract a mate. Only one Amargosaurus fossil has ever been discovered. It was dug up in southern Argentina, which just so happens to be one of the best places on Earth to view the southern lights, or to use the technical term, the Aurora Australis. This is probably why Amara and Aurora's sails look like the Aurora Australis, and why Amara can only evolve into Aurora's at night, as the Aurora Australis can only be seen at night. The Gala region introduced four new fossil Pokémon, who are all strange mishmashes of various fossil creatures. Some Pokémon fans believe they're a reference to the Crystal Palace dinosaurs outside London, but the paleoontological expert that advised us for this video's production disagrees with the fans' interpretation. The Crystal Palace dinosaurs weren't multiple species combined to create Frankensteins. Rather, they only contained minor errors, like scientists putting an iguanodon skeleton's thumb bone on its nose, thinking it was a horn. Our expert believes the Galar fossils aren't based on these sort of errors, but rather on paleontological forgeries. Forgeries are multiple fossils combined into Frankensteins, sometimes created by hucksters who want to claim they've discovered a brand new species. One of history's most famous forgeries was the Piltdown Man, a supposed missing link between ape and human discovered by a British archaeologist in 1912. It wasn't until 40 years later that scientists were able to prove that Piltdown Man was a hoax and actually was the combination of human and orangutan bones. In 1999, National Geographic magazine ran a cover story about a new species of feathered dinosaur discovered in China called the Archaeoraptor, but it turned out to be a forgery as well, made up from the head and arms of a bird and the legs and tail of various dinosaurs. One of Galar's four fossil Pokémon appears to draw inspiration from a real paleontological blunder, though. The American scientist Edward Drinker Cope once incorrectly placed the skull of a newly discovered fossil on the end of its tail rather than on its neck, essentially constructing the animal backwards. That Pokémon is Dragovish, which has the head of a placoderm fish coming on the tail of a stegosaur-like dinosaur. Most of the grass starter's final stages draw from prehistoric life. Venusaur might be the first example to pop into your head, as the Bulbasaur family has the saur suffix in their names, implying a connection to dinosaurs. But their original Japanese names have nothing to do with dinosaurs. For example, Venusaur's name is Fushigabana, meaning strange flower. Pokemon developers have said several times that the Venusaur family are basically just frogs, not dinosaurs. But in Gen 2, we do start to see the prehistoric theme take hold. Meganium borrows several traits from sauropod dinosaurs 
dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus. Meganium is only about 6 feet tall, but in real life, sauropods were the largest dinosaurs ever to exist. The largest land animals of all time were a group of sauropod dinosaurs called Titanosaurs, who could grow up to 120 feet tall and weigh as much as 150,000 pounds. This dino inspiration likely explains this Pokemon's prototype name in Gold and Silver's 1997 demo. Before its name was Meganium, it was called Hanoriyu, which in Japanese means flower dragon. Sceptile draws its inspiration from theropods, a group of dinosaurs that includes both Dilophosaurus and raptors. Just like Sceptile, theropods are bipedal, meaning they walk on two legs rather than four, with many possessing three fingers and toes on each hand and foot. Theropods were the ancestors of birds and had many feathers on their arms, just like Sceptile's pre-evolution Grovile. Despite what you may have seen in the movies like Jurassic Park, theropods weren't especially intelligent, at least by modern standards, and raptors almost certainly wouldn't have been smart enough to open doors, let alone spring traps on paleontologists. Some Pokemon are based on more recent fossils. Torterra is based on Maolania turtles, who only went extinct about 2,000 years ago, possibly due to human settlement. Maolania turtles were the same size as Torterra, about 2 meters long, and the horns made it impossible to withdraw their heads into their shells. Like most Pokemon, Torterra actually draws inspiration from more than one source. In this case, the World Turtle from Chinese, Hindu, and Native American mythologies. The World Turtle is believed to carry the whole world on its back, which explains Torterra's half ground type, and why the Pokedex says ancient people imagined that beneath the ground, a gigantic Torterra dwelled. Mamoswine is based on the woolly mammoth, relatives of modern-day elephants that went extinct fairly recently, mostly dying off at the end of the Ice Age 10,000 years ago. This fact is reflected in the Pokédex's entry, which tells us a frozen mamoswine was dug from ice dating back 10,000 years. Male mamoswine have larger tusks than female mamoswine, which is a reference to the gender differences in some real-life elephant species whose females also have smaller tusks, and sometimes no tusks at all. And just like Yanmega, mamoswine evolves from piloswine when leveled up with ancient power. Chestnut draws inspiration from Glyptodonts, armor mammals that, like the woolly mammoth, went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Glyptodonts are closely related to modern armadillos and could grow to the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Decidueye, on the other hand, isn't based on a truly prehistoric animal, but rather an animal that's gone extinct very recently. Decidueye resembles a stilt owl, the type of exceptionally long-legged owl native to Hawaii. They were driven to extinction about 1,500 years ago, when a new species appeared in their environment, humans. Hawaii emerged from the ocean only a few million years ago, meaning the islands aren't old enough to have prehistoric animals living on them. This is why the Hawaii-inspired region of Alola didn't introduce any new fossil Pokémon, instead replacing them with ghost-type Pokémon based on extinct species. Decidueye is a Hawaiian stilt owl, and Oricorio is a Hawaiian honeycreeper, a type of small bird that stilt owls preyed upon. Some honeycreepers have survived into the present, but a dozen honeycreepers species are presently endangered, and about 20 have already gone completely extinct. Similarly, Galarian Corsola is a ghost type for the same reason. It's a species of coral that has been wiped out by climate change. Another prehistoric creature, just like the pocket-sized Aerodactylus, was named after a Pokemon. In 2017, an unknown prehistoric creature was discovered in South Africa, a Dicynodont, an ancient mammal relative even older than the dinosaurs. Its discoverer was a huge Pokemon fan, so he named it Bulbasaurus. The published artwork showing what Bulbasaurus may have looked like even has a bush in the background as a clever nod to Bulbasaur. We mentioned earlier that a paleontological expert advised us for this video. That expert was none other than Dr. Christian Kammerer, the paleontologist who named Bulbasaurus. Thanks, Christian. Also thanks to Dr. Lava for writing this episode, and five members of the paleontological team Cosplay for Science for proofreading the script. Did you also know that Charmander was based on an ancient Greek scientific mishap? For more on that, check out Did You Know Gaming's video on Pokemon and Science. Thank you so much for having me on. My name is Patch, and I run the channel Tearzoo, a channel that describes and teaches wildlife ecology and evolution through the lens of gaming. For example, I make tier lists for various animal groups, and videos describing geologic eras as though they were balance patches in a video game. So please come check it out. Thanks.